and welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Jessica Clemens, and Sony Pictures Entertainment just released the newest Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer, and boy, does this trailer have a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. I mean, it has a worried Rio, a Nexus hub of different Spideys, and all these clashes with no sight of the two-part villain spot. What's going on? I'm gonna take the deepest plunge into this trailer and spot all the Easter eggs you might have missed, and let me tell you, this took some serious digging. We're all taking this trailer as a team so as to divide and conquer, so keep a watch out on Voss is an MT's breakdown as well. Let's just get into it right now with my Easter egg breakdown. We open the trailer to the Sony logo, which flashes and glitches between Ben Day dots and RGB colors. If you look closely, we start getting a more peculiar design. We get the look of a comic book panel with the comic design resembling an Archie comic book design for the Columbia Pictures. We get the Marvel logo with blue paint edging out of the lines. We've already started getting the taste of different art styles that will be ushered throughout the movie and what we see later in this trailer. Miles is on a rooftop overlooking the New York skyline. Now this scene probably takes place after this shot that was a newly released image a couple weeks ago, seeing as his mom and him are wearing the same outfits. I think they're under the water tower. Rio discusses her worries as Miles is growing and no longer needing her. As she speaks, we start getting flashbacks from 2018's Into the Spider-Verse. It's important moments from the movie that I like to add, like him receiving the costume from Stan Lee, learning to thwip with Peter B. Parker, falling for Gwen and his leap of faith. Also, look at all that sweet, sweet representation with the Puerto Rican flag. Also good to note that this is a newer suit than what we saw in the last movie. Also just want to note there's a block party going on soon, 4th of July-ish, so keep that in mind as an event probably expected to be ruined by the spot. When Miles takes the hot dog, I like the little title that says take, like in the first movie with the bagel toss, when it popped up bagel, and he sticks some money to his tummy with the spidey web and money signs all above it. When we get back to Miles' bedroom, his room is decked out. They got the anti-social social club parody poster, ASAP Rocky's Long Live ASAP album poster, a parody of course. This poster says The Way of the Butterfly with what I think is Muhammad Ali and top skater on PlayStation with Spider-Man on it. You know, it's just like a young man's room and I love it. That's when we start getting those same colors from the opening of the trailer. The glitches and bubbles start dissolving the space and objects start to float around the room. It's actually really beautiful. Now, it sort of resembles the ending of Into the Spider-Verse, but notice how the features on his face have gotten longer. His frame is taller. I think he's grown since we last seen him. So there's a possibility that Miles and Gwen have been able to meet a couple of times since we last saw them in Into the Spider-Verse. Only the movie can tell for certain but I think it's a green light. The comic next to Miles' head floating is the same comic from Into the Spider-Verse that gets stuck to his hand, The True Life Tales of Spider-Man. We also know the 42 symbolism is in honor of Jackie Robinson. What could be a little added hint to them visiting is Gwen in this cardigan. Just a quick little visit might be brisk in an alternate universe. You know what I'm saying. It's also worth noting that in the first look trailer we got a while ago, the Spider-Gwen looks identical to this Spider-Gwen. They just edited out the flying objects in the cardigan, probably because they didn't want it to get out that this probably isn't Gwen's first time visiting. You let me know what you think in the comics, but I think this stands. Now, we've seen these hexagons in the first trailer, and it's revealed when Miles whips through one, it's allegedly Mumbatan. So each hexagon could represent another universe. We also know in WandaVision, they had a ton of hexagons, but seeing as this is Sony and not the MCU, I'll just leave that there. Right when Rio, his mother says, wherever you go from here, you have to promise to take care of that little boy for me. We're taken to literally like the Citadel of Ricks, but for Spider-Men. In this universe, Spider-Men are existing and hanging out, safe from any harm, so we think. In the Amazing Spider-Man issues 9 and 10, Earth-13 was a safe zone, so maybe we're looking at something like that for this Citadel. Also notice Gwen's shoes. They've changed from her normal flats to these chucks. It was announced at the trailer after party that these actually belong to Hobie, voiced by Daniel Kaluuya, and they have a close relationship to one another that makes Miles a little jealous. Makes sense since they're both punk as hell and rock out. How are they hanging out though? And I'll get into that in a moment. I'm on camera a lot, so I have to see my face a lot. So you'd think I have to put a lot of effort in my skincare routine, but I don't because I use geology. Eee, here it is. Geology is a 15 time award winning personalized skincare company recognized in Hypebeast, Birdie, Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men Grooming Awards with over 6,000 five star reviews. That's uh, more than I can count on one hand. And they've recently expanded to offer products for pretty much whatever you need. All you gotta do is take a 30 second diagnostic quiz and Geology figures out your routine for you, which is very hard to do normally. So thank you, Geology. If you need hair care, use Geology's Co Wash, a specially formulated cream cleanser that removes buildup and cleanses the hair without the big lather or harsh ingredients of typical shampoos. And for the rest of your shower routine, you can use their body washes, which are free of harsh ingredients, smell great, and are refillable. And for after the shower, protect your skin from environmental stressors with vitamin C, E, Ferelic Serum to keep your skin looking young and healthy. And then a bit of dermatologist-tested aluminum-free deodorant that 
quite honestly, smells great and I have sensitive pits, so they're amazing. Right now for a limited time, Geology is hooking our audience up with an absolutely insane offer. If you use code NEWROCKSTARS, you will get an additional 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. That discount applies whether you're stocking up for yourself or stuffing someone else's stockings instead. Either way, Geology has you covered. Check out their awesome gift sets featuring all your favorite Geology products. To get started, just click the link in the description, take a 30 second diagnostic quiz, and their team of dermatologists will design a personalized routine just for you that ships directly to your door. This is where I'll just get into all the Spideys, and then we'll come back to the trailer in its normal order. Firstly, there's a ton of Spider-Men here, and some I don't think have that much importance, or they just made them with different colors to show how many Spider-Mens there really are in the universe. So I'll go over a good chunk of them and let me know if I missed any. Behind Gwen and Miles, we see a bunch of classic looking Spider-Men, and this classic Spider-Man suit that genuinely could just be anyone, but the white spider logoed one, I'm assuming is from Spider-Man Velocity. When you zoom out, we see everyone's favorite, most anticipated now since knowing Insomniac Spider-Man and Miles Morales. We've actually also seen that Insomniac Spider-Man suit before in Into the Spider-Verse. Beside them seated is the Mark II bulletproof armor from Amazing Spider-Man issue 656 from 1999. The Spider-Man they're talking to is hard to pinpoint and at New Rockstars we kind of teamed up on it and we think this could be a white suit from 2099. Up to the left, this could be any Spider-Woman, but I'm placing bets on May Parker. Walking alongside her was also very hard to pinpoint. We started getting very frustrated. But ultimately, this could be Foundation Spidey suit, but I also think we could see Foundation Spidey suit later. When we zoom out a bit more, we see the Renew Your Vow Spider-Man, which Spider-Man, MJ, and their daughter all have Spider-Man powers. Top left, we get the manga verse Spider-Man, Spider-Cop from Earth 19119. We see the Iron Spider suit from the Civil War comics, Spider-Man in his negative suit, Lady Spider, AKA Maybell Riley. She's actually one of my favorites. She's very fun. Please read her comics. Beside her is Undie Spider-Man. Now, I think this is Undie Spider-Man because that looks like a naked Spider-Man. Now, we see a normal Spider-Man suit, and I believe they're talking with the Fear Itself suited Spidey from the PS4 game. Above that, we see a more different fitted Spidey suit, but I think the blue one is April Parker from Earth 982. Also, at the top, I think we've got another variation of Jessica Drew Spider-Woman. We get the bombastic Bagman suit Spider-Man that had no mask, and the Human Torch lent his suit, but he had to use a paper bag to cover his face, probably because of legal reasons. That's why they're not using the Fantastic Four suit. We got the Werewolf Spidey. There's a Spidey with a Letterman's jacket, and I think this is Flash Thompson with the hair sticking up out of the costume. Something worth noting is every Spider-Man has a bracelet from the first look trailer. We know that Miguel uses this to jump universes, so these bracelets might have been given or created by almost every Spider-Man. I say almost because technically we don't know how Miles got his in this movie. I think this was given by Miguel because in the trailer after party, they said in regards to Gwen, you get invited into Oscar Isaac's cool spider force. You get invited and Miles does it, and you sort of can't tell him why. Let me know what you think in the comments because I think this could be tied to Miles living in the universe that originally had a Spider-Man and that former Spider-Man was the representative for that universe. I also think Hobie is a member of Spider-Force and that's how he met Gwen. We see our amazing Spider-Woman and now this is Spider-Woman voiced by Issa Rae. You can see her little baby bump in the trailer. She's fighting pregnant, baby, this is insane. You see her spider webs also come out of her fingertips instead of like a machine or her like wrist wrist. Now it looks like they're pulling from the 2015 Spider-Woman where she is indeed pregnant but also a private investigator. Also, it's worth noting the homage to our first Spider-Woman. I just love that the afro is just not fitting underneath the mask, so just wear the eyes, it's whatever. In the comics, she also has a motorcycle. She's ridden one even in the Spider-Gwen issues, so maybe this is pre-baby motorcycle riding just before she has to put it away for good. She's fighting the Vulture, and the art design for the Vulture is, mm, I, I eat this up. It looks so good, like some Da Vinci work. Voss will get into this design more in the breakdown, so please anticipate the design breakdown from Voss later on. We move to the scene of all the Spider-Men jumping our Spidey, and for why? We have a superior Spider-Man, AKA the Doc Ock, a symbiote Spider-Girl, top left that could be the AI Apex Spider-Man, or Tarantula from Earth 1610. There's actually a ton of six limited Spideys, so it could be any of them. We have Armored Spider-Man from 94, also a business Spider-Man in a business little suit. What is he doing? We get what could be Scarlet Spider 2 suit from the video games whipping in. The far left, we also have Jessica Drew. We have the Spider Monkey, which, oh my God, he's probably my favorite. We have the PlayStation 1 Spider-Man. Everyone has called this out online. You can tell by its design. This white hooded Spider-Man looks more like the 2099 white suited Spidey, which is Miguel, but it has a hood. So this could be a generic Spidey from a different colder universe. Now let's jump to this scene where we get a glimpse of our cape Spidey, AKA Spider-Man Unlimited from back in the day. We also see the Scarlet Spider, AKA Ben Riley. Now we see our favorite Spidey from Into the Spider-Verse Return, Peter B. Parker, voiced by Jake Johnson, sporting a robe, but also a baby sleeve. <laughs> 
We know from the YouTube premium Q&A after the trailer release, we're going to see a baby May, which we can assume is probably this Peter's baby. Safe to assume once he went home and into the Spider-Verse, he rekindled everything with MJ and lost a little bit of weight, but I liked you either way. You look good both ways. He's also walking upside down in what looks like the same place we see Gwen and Miles earlier in the trailer. You can see this machine in the background, which I suspect is what we see Miles get into that I think is an Alchemex. We get an over the shoulder shot of Miguel O'Hara looking at an image of him and what we can assume is probably his daughter, which will probably be the major motive for him in this movie. If I had to guess, whatever he's trying to fix has directly affected him in his past life with his daughter. In the comics, Miguel has a son, Gabriel, named after his brother. And in this movie, it looks like his daughter will be Gabriella. The file is named Gabriella 011. And as we know, unfortunately in Spider-Man's life, death is not far behind. So she probably passed away. This solemn shot could mean a lot of things, but I think it's worth noting how Miguel's head is turned, suggesting it's time to go. Jessica looks super apologetic. I like the idea that Jessica is playing up the role of the private investigator. She's also helping Miguel and they're working as a team. Deadline reported the friendship and footage seen at CinemaCon, so this might be true. Now, like I said earlier, there's sort of a spider force going on. I assume the spider woman is also on that team. Now, in the trailer after party, they say, the cool thing about Gwen, she has a special relationship with Jess because she sees her as a potential mentor, someone who seems to have it all figured out, which I think will be a great dynamic because they're two badasses. But this spider force is furthering this notion of teamwork, friendship, group of spideys when Miles only had Gwen, Peter B. Parker, and the others in Into the Spider-Verse. It's like seeing your best friend get other best friends, and you also have a crush on that best friend. You know, it's, it's just hard. This spot resembles the spot at the end of Into the Spider-Verse teaser that we got. <laughs> These webbed hexagons look like spider webs, but also resemble brain neurons, and I think this is inside a giant computer. Miguel's, to be exact. We see an unmasked Miguel O'Hara, and our boy is jacked. <laughs> he is big as hell. In my Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse updates video, I made a suggestion since we're going into Miguel's universe, he lives in a timeline where Alchemex has taken over. This is where Doc Ock, aka Liv, was working in Into the Spider-Verse. A lot of people have also speculated that this machine might be the portal that people use to get into the Spider-Man universe. So that's good, but if it's the bad one in Alchemex, it's bad. I'm sure it's one of the two. We get this close up of Spider Gwen and it's actually breathtaking. The colors and illustration styles, the signature of someone's initials on her cheek, like a true still from a storyboard. I think this is when we can expect for all hell to break loose, seeing as the styles change aggressively like it's falling apart. We also see Gwen from the looks of it saving an airplane? A whale? Looks like an airplane tail. I'm gonna go with airplane. Right then we get Gwen's narration. We're supposed to be the good guys. We get the shot of Miguel's universe, Nueva York, and the Sid Mead style art that comes with it. The archway to the futuristic tunnel says follow the speed limit. Clearly, Miguel is not. Check out that speed on that boy. Also, note how at the top right corner, it says Imperial Violet Crimson Red. Like this is a piece straight from a storyboard. And I love this attention to detail. When he whips to smash Miles down, I like that this could go two ways. His suit is peeling away, maybe because he shouldn't be in that universe, or he's literally getting the clothes knocked off of him. There's also a ton of things that we didn't actually get to see in this trailer. We know we'll be seeing Daniel Kaluuya's hobby, aka spider Punk, Pavitir, our Spider-Man from India, May the baby, and we didn't even get a look at the spot, our villain. Now, normally I'd get into these characters, especially the ones we didn't see, but later this week or next week, my video breaking down each prominent Spider-Man from across the Spider-Verse will include information about all these folks missing from the trailer. That's everything that I found in this trailer. There's a ton of new information, and I know I tried my hardest hitting each one. Though there was a ton of information, we didn't actually get a full glimpse of the full story, so there's a million theories we can still make, and we shall! Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lulu underscore Clemens. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.